Hello and greetings everyone. Today I wanted to make a little Christmas special, or better said, um, Yule special. Now, before I begin, I want to say the following. First of all, I will continue to do videos focused on Vikings, but of course some others too. I will be in television on multiple occasions in the near future and I'm holding speeches more and more frequent, frequently which means that YouTube well I still hope I can get to at least one video per week and I want to make more videos in 2017. Now to Christmas I want to give you an idea where Christmas comes from and that it actually has nothing to do with Christianity. I'm going to read and translate a text that I wrote years ago for the site Wege ins Licht, uh, Ways into the Light, that I own and run. So this text, I will just read it because I feel that the text can formulate it better than I could if I was just talking about it. So let's begin. Where does Christmas come from? And has it anything to do with Christianity? First of all, we will start with the date. Now, on many locations around the globe, uh, Christmas is celebrated on the 24th or 25th of December, sometimes even at the 21st of September, 21st September, sorry, my English is lacking. Um, and originally, uh, it celebrated the birth of a sun god of a certain culture, not of Jesus. Um, when the Romans uh, celebrated Sol Invictus, the invincible sun, that was their version of Christmas. They also celebrated Saturnalia, which was basically a Roman version of Christmas, including gifting the uh, emperor, the Caesar, because the Romans basically thought that by giving presents to the godlike Caesar that they have, they would actually reach the god Saturn, uh, Saturn, Saturn, I'm saying it in Latin now, and Saturn would then reward the Romans for the presents and the loyalty. Saturnalia was celebrated on the 21st of December and most of the uh, ancient cultures celebrated some uh, festival at the uh, equinox of the sun. I hope I am saying that correct. So when the sun was the lowest they all kind of celebrated the rebirth of the sun. In Germanian, in Germania, I hope that's correct, um, they actually celebrated the rebirth of the god Balder. Now Balder was the god of light, the god of healing and many other things and the most liked god. And if you remember the story in the Edda, he was killed by Loki, but he will be reborn. And that celebration at uh, the Yule fest festival, Yule, celebrated the rebirth of Balder, that he may come again. Actually, the whole thing was a long festival. It went for about a week. So from Christmas, as we celebrate it now, to Sylvester, New Year. So um, on the first day, they would basically celebrate their ancestors, tell their stories, teach the children what their ancestors did. On the second day they would celebrate with the animals of the family. It was quite popular in some regions to make races of the cattle, like a swine race, which swine is the first. Um, later on they would make a swine out of sweet bread and eat that as kind of a celebration because the boar was also a holy animal and uh, then they celebrated the god Thor that he shall get the power to defeat the frost giants so that the snow and the ice would melt away and uh, later 
when we celebrate the new year and with fireworks and everything, they actually did something very similar. You may have heard of the Perchtenlauf, where they get this big giant ugly masks on and scream and rally through the through the village and basically um, they also had a straw ball that was set on fire and carried or rolled through the through the uh, town to get rid of all the evil spirits. Now back to the origins of Christmas. Um, the Catholic Church laid the date of their Christmas celebration on the 21st of Sep uh, December for a very very good reason. Conversa uh, conversion. You see if you try to convert a population to your belief and they love Christmas, their Christmas, their heathen Christmas and you tell them, well if you come to our religion you can't celebrate it anymore would you join that club? You wouldn't. So most people back then also didn't like the idea so the Pope had to do something and because he wanted to convert people he basically allowed them to celebrate Christmas even though in Christianity that was actually forbidden <clears throat> and had no religious origin whatsoever. Now let me explain that. The Catholic Church celebrated Christmas first in history in the year 336 AD. Um, that was the very first time a Pope said, okay, let's celebrate Christmas. Before that, the uh, Church actually had their own winter celebration at the 6th of January, Epiphany. Epiphany is still celebrated today by theologi theologians and some more, let's say, origin Christian stuff. But because that's really the 6th of January Epiphany is the actually Christian celebration in winter. Uh, during the 2nd century the church did actually celebrate the birth of Christ but biblically correct, which means at the end of August, on the very last day of August. Why? Well, back in the day people didn't really record a birth date. They didn't say, um, you know, that guy is born on the 30th, 20th of August. They would say he was born in summer or late summer. And that's actually what they did. According to many, uh, to many pages in the Bible, we can actually know, we actually do know that Jesus was born in late summer. So the church said, okay, let's celebrate at the last day of August. And we also have a little bit of differentiation here because I uh, uh, don't know how, what is called in English. Johannes, one of the four great apostles and writers, um, he basically said that Jesus was born in the mid of October. Anyway, it's clear to anyone who read the Bible that Jesus was not born in December. He was born in the late summer. Okay, or oh, early autumn, depends. But definitely not in winter. Definitely not in December. And it was not until the year 529 that Kaiser uh, Caesar Justinian actually made Christmas an official Christian celebration day. And that was again for non-religious reasons. Now what is to mention here is that the date that we celebrate Christmas at has nothing to do with Christianity at all. The church just put the date there to make conversion easier. So if you want to celebrate the birth of Christ you should celebrate at the last day of August and not in December when he already was a few months old. And to 
another important thing, actually early Christians thought that it was illegal to celebrate the equinox of the sun because in Babylonia um, they sacrificed children and killed them to honor the gods and to make their gods well be more rewarding for the people so um, the early Christians actually thought that celebrating Christmas was a heathen thing and it was clearly outlawed and forbidden and um, that's one thing that got the Christians into trouble with the, with the Roman Caesars because it was usually tradition to give the Caesar some presents on Saturnalia which the Christians would not and therefore well, the Caesar didn't get any presents from Christi Christians, so he was kind of pissed and thought that was a sign of treason. Now, since we are talking about presents, where do presents come from? The tradition of Christmas presents is, again, not a Christian idea, actually quite the opposite. You see, I, there is a Bible quote to presents, and it says um, that the celebration to uh, they said this to the celebration of the birthday of the pharaoh that only the bad people are actually the ones who think the presents are good so the bible itself states that giving presents to someone's birthday is a very bad idea actually the bible I, have to look up the passage but it says also that celebrating a birthday is a non-christian thing it's a heathen thing it's a bad thing it's a sin to celebrate birthday so celebrating the birthday of christ to the early christians was already offensive it was a sin to celebrate the christmas of christ, uh, the birth of christ and to the presents Again, giving presents to someone else is a heathen idea. It's not a Germanic idea. It's a Roman idea and tradition. And the one who got the presents was the Caesar. Um, later, this tradition was broadened up and the Romans start to give each other, make presents to family and friends. Now, uh, the three kings in the Bible, you know, those three guys from the uh, East basically didn't make presents to Jesus but sacrifices to God that's a real difference here so the idea that they gave presents to the family of Jesus is not really true that those were meant as sacrifices to God also um, the Christians had very bad experiences with celebrating Christmas better said Saturnalia of ancient Rome because usually and to celebrate Saturnalia they also had quite bloody activities going on in the Colosseum so again heathen thing bad making presents to Christmas is a clear sign of heathenry not of Christianity and where do we put these presents well under the Christmas tree where does that come from you see, the Christmas tree in itself is again a Germanic tradition. During the Yule celebration, um, you would usually get an uh, evergreen tree that were quite common in the region of Germania and put it in the uh, midst of the town place, a town plaza in the mid. Or you would take evergreen. Uh, or and you would usually take evergreen branches and decorate your home with them as a sign of hope of rebirth of health of yeah, really the hope that the grim winter will go away soon and as a promise that spring will come soon and everything will be better you see, winter was a very harsh time in Germania and many people basically died in the winter. It was cold, it was, there wasn't that much food around, so it was really a bad time. And they actually celebrated 
They got Thor to make him more powerful so that he can finally defeat the Frost Giants and let the sun come back. And the sun, Suna, was a goddess herself and it was thought that Baldur is the one who helps the sun rise again. So they celebrated Baldur, Suna, Thor and their ancestors and many others. But really the idea of the tree comes from ancient Germania and was a sign of life goes on. Even in the darkest hour of the year, there's still life represented by the evergreen tree. Actually, the tree was even decorated, well, not with the stuff that we have now, La Meta and all that stuff, but really it was decorated and at the last day of the celebration was actually burned as a sacrifice to the gods with all the um, stuff hanging on it as well as a sacrifice and um, that was a prayer to the gods that just like the tree was decorated they may decorate the flowers with new blossoms again and it was actually King George the first of England who was actually born a German and then took the English throne who got this whole idea of the Christmas tree over to Britain then through the British British Empire the idea of the Christmas tree spread through the entire world however the idea to put presents under the tree that goes back to King uh, to Queen Victoria Queen Victoria also part to German, was actually the first one to put presents under the Christmas tree. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Deuteronomy 12, 2 to 4 actually says in the Bible that servants of Yahweh, of God, should burn evergreen trees because they are of heathen origin. So Christians should not put a Christmas tree up. They should burn Christmas trees wherever they find them. The Bible itself tells you to burn your Christmas tree or any Christmas tree you might find. Go to your neighbor's house, burn the Christmas tree. That's what the Bible tells you. So Christmas tree, not a Christian idea at all. It's a Germanic idea. And then we come to the, well, uh, I quickly have to look up what that is called in English. In German we call it Adventskranz and it's I'm not sure if that is actually a thing in English regions. I'm very sorry. I'm a bit stressed for Christmas so I have to Advent ref ref. Okay. You know this evergreen thing with the candles on it that you lit yeah, that's again a Germanic idea. Actually, this evergreen wreath was originally a sign of, well, of health and of fertility. It was usually not put on a table or it was usually either uh, put somewhere in the house, like you nailed it to a wall or something, so that everyone inside the home is healthy and protected and just like the evergreen tree endures and comes through the winter. However, there was a special uh, occasion where you, well, if you were a woman and you wanted to become pregnant, you would wear that wreath around your head. Now without candles and without lighting it, of course, but you would uh, wear it around your head for fertility and if you wore it for, uh, during sex that was kind of the superstitious belief that you would become pregnant for sure if you wear it. Now this has a little bit of correlation with the mistletoe of the Celts. The mistle was a Celtic all-around herb. It was basically used for love and fertility. So hanging up a mistletoe in your house is actually of Celtic origin and kissing under it originally meant that you wanted to become pregnant from the person you kissed. Uh, the Celts believed 
at least, at least superstitiously, that not sex led to the birth of children, but that you got impregnated by kissing. So kissing under mistletoe was basically having a baby with a person. Remember that when you kiss a person under the tree, uh, under the mistletoe the next time. So, um, you know, the calendar, the advent calendar, that some of you may use this thing filled with chocolate where you open a door each day. That's actually a Roman tradition. Now, the Romans didn't put chocolate in it, but in advance of Saturnalia, they usually hid money in those things, and each day they would get a denar or two out of there to buy presents for the family, the friends, and of course the Caesar. So it was originally filled with money, and it's a Roman idea, not a Christian idea. So we already figured that Christmas has nothing to do with Christianity. What about the guy, Santa Claus? Now Santa has again a mixed tradition. You see, the actual Santa figure that we believe in is of a Germanic origin. Actually, it was Odin in that form known as Oski, the one who fulfills wishes, who would, during the Yule Fest, come to people, knock at the door and beg for entry. And he was described as an old, very fat guy with a long, long, long white beard, long white hair, who would usually wear a staff to, you know, lean upon and make the whole traveling thing easier in dirty clothes, usually brown clothes. That's pretty, that's important for later. Dirty brown clothes. And of course, a hat. The usual hat that Odin wears is that Gandalf style hat. That's a hat that Odin would wear in iconography and was described wearing a, you know, this Gandalf style wizard hat. And if a family took him in and served him well, gave him good food, let him sleep in their bed, he would actually fulfill them some wishes and grant them some wishes and would fulfill them. If they, however, would not let them in or even be mean to him, he would punish them with bad luck and a lot of other things, or quite literally just kill them because Odin was also the god of death. And that's where the Knecht Ruprecht, I hope I pronounce it correct in English, Knecht Ruprecht, um, is also the same person originally. So, the idea of the guy who gives you presents also goes back to Oski, because he sometimes, if people wished for gold, he would just get a present and in it would be gold. So it goes back to Germanic things. However, I have to point out that later um, Oski was still celebrated in Scandinavia and that's where he actually got his name of, well, let's say, yeah, not really his name, but the tradition come, came from there. You see, uh, the original Christian Saint Nicholas uh, Santa Claus was a bishop of Myra of Anatolia, modern day Turkey. He was a bishop there and he was said to gift and donate things to the poor. Now he didn't go through the chimney or something, he also went from door to door and would gift the poor people something to eat, something, some clothes to wear, and later on he would indeed climb up the roof and let the, pres uh, the presents fall through the chimney. Sometimes that's uh, that's the legend. So it also so the Santa Claus does partially have a Christian origin in the Bishop of Myra, but also partially a Germanic tradition of, of Oski. And those two stories kind of mixed together, because. The Santa Claus thing that we have today comes from Christian, Christian converted Denmark and Sweden. There, they, the people still celebrated 
Christmas and they still celebrated Santa Claus in the form of Oski Odin, but they wanted to make it more Christian, so they found the story of the Bishop of Myra and basically put everything that has to do with Odin, Oski, and put it on the Bishop of Myra. That means his staff of honoring become, became this uh, bishop's cane and he was also clothed in the bishop clothes. Now, today's Santa with the colors of white and red was actually a gimmick, a gag from Coca-Cola. They invented those colors and they made Santa wearing red and white. However, the idea of Santa goes way back to Germanic origins. So, um, the name itself, Christmas, okay, that's pretty much clear that the name is referring to Christ. In German we call it Weihnachten, which would be translated as Sacred Nights. And that goes back to, again, the Yule Festival, because Sacred Nights, it wasn't one day, it was an entire week of celebration. And that's basically the origin of Christmas. So again, has nothing to do with Jesus. Not at all. Actually, the Bible tells you to not celebrate Christmas. And Jehovah's Witnesses and some other more traditional Christians do not celebrate Christmas for exactly that reason. It's a heathen Roman Germanic tradition. It has nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. So if you celebrate it, please call it Yule or Saturnalia and celebrate it like the Romans or the Germanic people did because Christmas is bullshit. Now I will end this video and I, well, I wish you not a Merry Christmas but a Happy Yule. Have fun everyone and see you next year.